I'm Ara Barnett at the Broadcast Center for CBS here in New York. You're seeing Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds address the shooting at the high school there earlier today. She'll be followed by local and foot law enforcement. Let's listen. Recognize the immediate and courageous response of local law enforcement today and the incredible coordination between local police, first responders, the Dallas County Sheriff's Office, the Iowa State Patrol, DCI, ATF, and the FBI, and multiple healthcare providers. I had the opportunity a few moments ago to speak with some of the officers involved, and in a situation like this, as we all know, every minute counts. And their heroic actions today, we can say, saved lives. The response was tremendous, and we're extremely grateful. The full resources of the state government will be available to assist in the response and, of course, the community's recovery from this tragic event. The mental health region uh, has social workers that are embedded in the school district and will provide counseling services for the students, the families, and the staff. As you all know, this is an ongoing investigation, so law enforcement will brief you only on what they can at this time and they will provide additional information as it becomes available. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Chief, to the Chief. Thank you. I'm Chief Eric Vaughn from the Perry Police Department. I want to thank the quick actions of the Dallas County dispatchers who handled and dispatched the calls regarding this traffic, tragic event this morning. I also want to recognize the initial officers from the Perry and Dallas County Sheriff's Office and their actions on scene. Thank you to the massive response from agencies throughout the area, including EMS, for their assistance today. It is truly amazing to see first responders work together in these crisis situations. And I cannot forget to recognize the teachers, faculty, and students involved who acted bravely and heroically in this tragic situation. Thank you to the community support we have seen and we will continue to need in the future. All of our condolences to the victims and their families. They need your thoughts and prayers as well as time and space to process and to grieve. This community has been through tough times before and have rallied together. I'm sure this time will be no different. Thank you. Introduce Mitch Mortvet. Thank you, Chief. My name is Mitch Mortvet. I'm an assistant director with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. At 7:37 a.m., <clears throat> excuse me, on January 4th, 2024, the Perry Police Department responded to an active shooter event at Perry High School. Meanwhile, Dallas County Communications was also receiving multiple 911 calls of an active shooter at the high school. Perry police officers responded within minutes. They immediately made entry and witnessed students and faculty either sheltering in place or running from the school. <clears throat> Once inside, they located multiple individuals with gunshot wounds. Officers immediately attempted to locate the source of the threat and quickly found what appeared to be the shooter with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. As additional officers responded, a systematic approach search of the school took place. Officers located during the search of the school an improvised explosive device. The state fire marshal and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms rendered the device safe. Numerous officers from multiple agencies were able to secure the school and verify no additional threats. At the same time, first responders were rendering aid to the victims who were later transported to area hospitals. The shooter has been identified as 17-year-old Dylan Butler, a student at Perry High School. 
Butler was armed with a pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun. Butler also made a number of social media posts in and around the time of the shooting. Law enforcement is working to secure those pieces of evidence. All evidence thus far suggests that Butler acted alone. There are six victims, one of them who is deceased. That individual was a sixth grade student at Perry Middle School. The other five are being treated at area hospitals. Four of the surviving student, four of the victim, surviving victims are students, and the fifth is a school administrator. The law enforcement response was swift and immediate. Roughly 150 officers from local, state, and federal agencies responded within the hour. The investigation in today's tragedy is ongoing. The Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation is serving as the lead investigative agency with assistance from the Perry Police Department, the Dallas County Sheriff's Office, the FBI, the ATF, and the Dallas County Attorney's Office. At this time, we will take a few questions. Uh, Mitch, uh, Phil Jones from the Register. Yeah. Um, I was told by the father of a student who was shot that his son witnessed Principal Dan Marburger be shot. Is he the administrator and what is his condition? The investigation's ongoing and we're not releasing any other names other than Dylan Butler's name at this time. Can you give us any indication as to motive for this? I know this is ongoing. But... Anything into the background of him is part of the investigation and we're obviously going to take a deep dive into that, but there's nothing that we can release at this time. It, at this time, it's my understanding as of about, an, I should say, as of about an hour ago, one was in critical condition but appeared not to be life-threatening, and the other four are stable. Is any racial motivation in this shooting, and are there any Latino victims? As far as the ethnicity of the victims, I'm not sure, um, and there's nothing to indicate at this time that it had anything to do with race. Um, as far as motive, again, that's part of the background investigation, and that's something that we're continuing to look into. Sir, excuse me, there's a video online. Is there any, uh, any credibility to this video naming this man as the shooter? I haven't seen the video, and that I don't know at this time, but we are, law enforcement is working to secure um, those pieces of evidence, as I mentioned in the statement, so there's nothing more that we can comment on about that. This is the first time that we've heard It, it all it all happened in the uh, Perry High School, and it was before school started, so there were not many students, and it's our understanding that there was a breakfast program going on, so there may have been students of, of different grades, if you will, in the school at that time. But it all was contained in the Perry High School, not in any of the other buildings. How many shots were fired? That's still part of the investigation. We're trying to determine that. How sophisticated was the IED? Device? I'm, I'm sorry, one of you? Yes. Uh, not much about it, other than it was uh, pretty rudimentary and it was rendered safe by, like I said, the state fire marshal and the ATF. Can I ask a question to the governor? Sure. Um, given that the investigation is ongoing and this is a local state matter, you know, however, the eyes of the world are on Iowa uh -huh. over the next 11 days. How should the candidates running for president talk about what happened? Well, today? I'll let them. Yeah. Violence I'll let them decide how they're going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to focus on the investigation, and we're going to focus on making sure that we provide the resources that the community, the teachers, the staff, those that are involved, the families, that we're providing the resources that they need during this difficult time. So that's what I'm going to be focused on, the state of Iowa is going to be focused on, and I'll let the candidates decide what they're going to focus on. Thank you. We're going to take no more questions at this time. What, what does the Thank school, you. For school safety for other schools in the area that we're looking at this year, what does school safety look like going forward here in Iowa? I mean, as, as it was commented on um, by the chief, 
that and by the governor as well that uh, um, you know everybody reacted the way they should and, and it's obvious that training first of all at the school level you know with faculty and students um, everybody reacted absolutely appropriately the way they should as well as law enforcement as they are entering the building thank you We've been listening now to Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds, as well as other law enforcement officials, including Chief Aaron Vaughn and, uh, and others there in Perry, Iowa. Speaking That's right. We were hearing them discuss the shooting at Perry High School. Now, new information that we've just learned is that one victim died and was identified as a sixth grade student. The shooter who has died, according to a self-inflicted gunshot wound, also apparently had an improvised explosive device that was uh, delivered at the school. Um, the ATF came in and uh, made sure that was no longer a threat. The suspect also now identified as a 17-year-old student at that school, Dylan Butler. Uh, motive behind this crime is unknown at this time. Yeah, we saw the chief, Eric Vaughn, become very emotional mm -hmm. at times during this press conference. We also heard the governor express her resilience. Our own Ed O'Keefe asking her about how all the candidates being there in Iowa might affect the national discourse about gun violence. And on that, we want to go now to CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. He has been there outside of the high school in Perry, Iowa. He's been covering this. He's been talking even to one of the victims uh, of those gunshot uh, wounds. Again, six victims in total, one, dece one deceased, one who is still recovering, a school administrator. So, Ed, talk to us about what you have been able to ascertain over the course of the day. Well, as the, as the uh, state and uh, local officials said, it happened early this morning. Uh, appears to have happened during an early breakfast program and, uh, and uh, in the lunchroom and has resulted in the death of one sixth grader. Uh, we had heard about the potential fate of that school administrator throughout the day and it seems that person has been injured, not killed, which will come as a, a relief to many who know that person, uh, but obviously great sadness and concern for the family of that sixth grader uh, who was caught up in this. It was an early breakfast program, according to mm. these local authorities. Um, and, and the uh, shooter, 17-year-old, apparently came in with two different weapons, a pump-action shotgun and a singer caliber weapon, uh, plus that improvised explosive device, or what they're calling an improvised explosive device that they say they were able to disable. Um, this is a town of 8,000, about 40 miles north of Des Moines. And when word came this morning about this, the initial concern was that it was a, a, a far larger uh, incident. It, right. Any of these incidents is too large, but, but certainly the, the count initially was feared to be much higher. Um, and yeah, it comes against the backdrop and it is drawing more attention today because, uh, as I said, the eyes of the world are on Iowa. And uh, with 11 days to go until the caucus, and with the governor and other Republicans campaigning across the state for their preferred choices. And so inevitably, it may or may not come up uh, from, from candidates, but it's certainly going to be on the minds of people watching this across the state and around the country as the issue of gun violence continues uh, to scourge the country. This is the second school shooting so far this year, just the fourth day of the year. Uh, there were roughly 20 last year. And, uh, you know, not a good sign if, if, uh, if there have already been two. Um, but, again, notable that they say the investigation is still ongoing. Uh, but, again, one dead, uh, another handful injured uh, with injuries that appear to not be life-threatening. And, Ed, to your point, you had a candidate for the GOP nomination, Vivek Ramaswamy, holding an event in that town this morning, and he simply offered prayers around this news. You press the governor there on what she might expect candidates to say, and she completely stepped away from that and said, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna allow them to speak for themselves. But just on what we know, a student bringing two weapons to school and an improvised explosive device will naturally raise questions about the school's security, access to weapons, and the like. We've all been here way too uh, frequently. Do you expect that, despite an initial reluctance to touch this, GOP candidates will have to address this topic of gun safety and gun laws at some point. They'll probably be asked about it through the weekend, Errol, uh, and we'll see how they talk about it. But um, 
uh, already today, uh, Florida Governor DeSantis, in, a, in an interview with other outlets, uh, suggested it's a local and state matter and one that local communities and states have to sort out for themselves. It's, it's a pretty standard line for him and, and for many Republicans. Uh, and we'll see if that's uh, where it stays or if, if it deviates at all uh, in the coming days. And the other aspect of this uh, that there's been increasing conversation about on both sides of the aisle is the use of social media. There is word of uh, an element of that in the lead up to this this morning. And so we'll see if that becomes a topic of debate as it continues to be across the country for all sorts of reasons, especially among school-aged children. Another heavy story. Ed O'Keefe there in Perry, Iowa, getting the latest for us. Ed, thank you. Thanks, Our Ed. CBS News Chief National Affairs and Justice Correspondent, Jeff Begay, is also following all of this uh, from Washington. Jeff, the improvised explosive device isn't something we usually hear of. How alarming is that? And can you touch on the social media aspect the, the suspect who is deceased, his account's being suspended, but not before he was able to get his own videos out. Yeah, that's um, oftentimes the, the issue in, in some of these shootings is that we see some of these suspects telegraphing what they're about to do uh, through the use of social media. We don't know if it was sent or put online via uh, a phone. Uh, or a computer, I, I suspect, and this is obviously just speculation, but I, I suspect that it was probably by using his phone, which again makes it even harder for law enforcement to spot something like this before it happens. That could have been posted as he was walking through the doors, perhaps. But you, Errol, you brought up the fact that he was armed, obviously, a pump-action shotgun, the, the, the kind of shotgun that, that, and I don't have the data, readily available, but I'm sure that is the, a, a, a type of shotgun that we see in, in many homes across the U.S. Um, and certainly in parts of Iowa, parts of the Midwest, perhaps par parts of the South. Um, but investigators will be looking into, well, how did he get his hands on that gun? Was it a gun that was perhaps in his home that was unsecured? We don't know the answers to those questions, nor do we know at this time the motive for this shooting. Uh, what we do know is that law enforcement uh, in that area responded uh, in an all-hands-on-deck kind of fashion in a relatively short period, we were hearing earlier today, it took about seven minutes before the first officers arrived on scene, and they didn't wait. They went in, according to the early analysis of this response. Now, there are questions about whether there was some sort of, uh, perhaps, uh, police or security at that school on a daily basis, would they have been there at the time of day when this student entered the school? We were told that there was some sort of breakfast program, but that most of the students weren't in the school at the time. So if you're gonna do an after action report, you're going to have to look at what was the security like earlier in the morning at that school? How was this person able to enter the school armed with a gun, uh, was it something that was concealed? Uh, or uh, another question, were there magnetometers, the uh, metal detectors at the front door? A lot of schools have them, especially in urban areas. Some schools don't. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that they'll have to look into as well. They're looking for a motive. I'm sure they're looking through his digital footprint uh, and if they haven't already, uh, they will take a more thorough look, look as the hours go on. Uh, but that could speak to a motive, especially if the suspect is now deceased. But uh, within the time that he walked into that building and police showed up, he uh, claimed a victim, uh, uh, six people uh, shot, one sixth grade student, killed, uh, and of course we heard from law enforcement that the suspect uh, took his own life, uh, according to the initial investigation. So we got a lot of information there and about that improvised device, that uh, IED, 
Um, we heard from investigators that it wasn't a sophisticated device. It seemed rather rudimentary, I think is the word that he used, meaning that it could be something that this 17-year-old assembled in some room in his house or a garage or somewhere else, we don't know. All questions that law enforcement will seek to answer as community members there look for answers after this, uh, after this shooting. Uh, you talked about, and we've talked over the last several hours, about the emotion uh, from law enforcement at the scene. You know, I, I think oftentimes we look at law enforcement and we think that they're made of steel, but of course they're human. Right. And when you see something like this unfold, or at least the aftermath, it sticks with you because it happened in a school. Uh, you have administrators there, you have teachers there, you have students there. There may have been young students there because, again, they mentioned this breakfast program, which is probably open to elementary school students as well as middle school students. So uh, they did have a lot of answers for us. They will need to answer more of these questions from the media and the community uh, as the hours progress. And you mentioned uh, not knowing whether there were magnetometers. I got to say, uh, Perry, Iowa, um, knowing Iowa, know, having gone to school there myself, Jeff, that's just not the ethos of Iowa. The idea that you would not be able to walk into uh, a school like that, that all the kids would have to go through magnetometers. It was something that, that um, has been debated, but that's not commonplace. And, uh, and so as the law enforcement is now trying to figure things out, trying to figure out what went wrong and what should be improved, how long does that whole process take? When, when can we potentially learn more about what was going on in this uh, shooter's mind? I, I think we'll learn more over the next 24 hours, um, in part because of that digital footprint. I, you know what it's like these days. Most of us keep some of our, our most precious secrets and, frankly, passwords in our phones or on our computers. And what that does is tell a story about all of us. Um, and investigators are skilled at looking through the data, the numbers, passwords, whatever you have on your phone or uh, whatever your digital footprint is, and you can create a profile of a suspect or a potential suspect. So I don't think it's going to take that long for them to, to paint a picture for all of us of what led up to uh, this shooting today, the minutes, the days before the shooting. And then you're going to have uh, politicians, local officials, law enforcement raise this issue, is that with, uh, with each and every one of these school shootings dating all the way back to Columbine, they don't just happen in a vacuum. There's always something that a person in distress or a person intent on attacking someone or something, there are always signs there, whether they are interested in getting access to weapons, some of the things they write or say in a public setting, whether it's in school or at the mall or at the dinner table, frankly. Um, and so there are signs there, and that's why you have law enforcement always saying, if you see something, you say something. I, I remember previous FBI directors, James Comey for one, who used to always say that these things don't happen in a vacuum. There was always someone who may have seen something that just wasn't right, but then they didn't speak up. So these are all issues that law enforcement and public officials there in, in Perry will take a look at and throughout Iowa and the country, frankly. Yeah. Jeff Begays, thank you. Thank you for that, Jeff.